When it comes to creating branded assets, using tools like Midjourney and Dali is a great way to kind of like have a nice base image. But if you wanted to take, you know, images to look and feel photorealistic on brand, you definitely would want to tap into Stable Diffusion. There are a few tools making an AI synthetic image look and feel real. Um, so there's a free tool called Crea, and then there's another one called Magnific. We can show just the process of creating an image for an imaginary brand from a prompting perspective. So I would, first of all, start with ChatGPT to brainstorm. Yeah, and it also gives the image prompts as well. So it's given us the prompt, which we will start generating some of these prompts in GPT and then that's it. Let's see the result. Oh, wow. Interestingly enough, ChatGPT has actually created an image, which I deem is probably good enough to use. What we can do is actually go ahead and upscale it. So Salma, can you, we were geeking out about this a little bit right before I record, but can you, can you give a kind of a quick breakdown over, when I think about AI imagery right now, and we're recording this uh, in early April, 2024. So this will probably be, uh, you know, not, you know, completely outdated for a week or two, but, but such as the, the pace of AI, I think of Dali, which is kind of built into chat GPT. I think of mid journey and I think of stable diffusion and maybe there's some other ones that are less obvious. I know there's Firefly, I believe with, with Adobe. Can you give people a sense myself very much included uh, which one of those is, is there, a, is there a leader that is the best? I'm guessing they probably have their best for different things. Like how should people be thinking about all the different platforms from imagery in terms of strengths, weaknesses, and positioning? Yeah, no, that's a great question. I think when it comes to creating branded assets, um, using tools like Midjourney and Dali is, is a great way to kind of like have a nice base image. But if you wanted to take you know, images to look and feel photorealistic, um, on brand, more editorial look, or even a branded style, you definitely would want to tap into Stable Diffusion. And for those of you guys who don't know what Stable Diffusion is, it's basically an open source model, which you can train your branded assets. So if you say, for example, you had a coffee brand and there's a certain look and feel to it, and you wanted the AI to understand that look, you'd want to train the stable diffusion model in a meaningful way to spit out those types of images. So if you're a beginner, I would say start off with mid journey and DALI, but then once you really get the hang of it, then definitely think about training a model like stable diffusion. The nice thing about stable diffusion is that, as I said, like you can train it, fine tune a model, make it so that it spits out on brand content uh, on a consistent basis. Um, but it is the negatives to stable diffusion is just that the setup, it doesn't cost much, but there is a quite a big um, setup process to it. If you wanted to kind of like get started with stable diffusion without actually setting it up, there are a few tools out there in the market, which I'm going to show you uh, shortly that does that for you. So like it will bring out the textures, the material, the skin, the hair, um, essentially making an AI synthetic image look and feel real. Wow. Is that what you refer to as upscaling when you have an AI image and it gives it a little bit, is it, it's almost adding like some of the, the, the blemishes that you would expect to see in a real photo? Yes, precisely. Yeah. So with the upscalers, they add, they bring out texture, there's different settings to it. If you wanted to get started with like a simpler tool, Crea is a very nice free tool that can help you do that. It does kind of change the image, but it all depends on the settings that you select essentially. And then there's another one called Magnific and I like to use Magnific only because it doesn't, I find Magnific doesn't really change the image, whereas Crea changes, you know, sometimes um, there were instances where I've uploaded an image where a model's holding a cup of tea, for example, and then all of a sudden she's got hairy hands. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Would love to do this live. Live in Arizona. Let's say I have a premium grapefruit brand where mm -hmm. I can send you eight gorgeous grapefruits, you know, just uh, shots of like them cut in half with like juicy, you know, juicy fruit inside. Um, a lot of, uh, you know, lifestyle shots of maybe of, you know, them sitting on a table in, in mm -hmm. the sun in a nice little backdrop. It's like kind of uh, where you'd expect them to be grown. Yeah, I'd love, can, can we go through the process of building some of those ads? And, and for assets, I think having some good lifestyle shots, uh, if we could, if there's, if it's possible to do a, a shot of like the grapefruit in the box, I know brand, it's going to be a little hard here because we don't have a brand asset, but even if we had just a very basic mark that we could show just the process. But yeah, if we could build out assets for lifestyle for very basic 
product for maybe even email campaign uh, on a product photography stuff, things like that, whatever assets we could build. I'd love to see how you think about going through that from a prompting and from an upscaling perspective. Yeah, sure. So grapefruit in Arizona in a box and the type of feel that you want, did you want it more editorial or just more lifestyle? Is more lifestyle, definitely. More lifestyle. Yeah. So we're not doing the image generation here. We're using the ideation and the prompt creation in ChatGPT. Precisely. Yeah. Got it. Exactly. So let's start with brand identity. Who is, so who's this brand? So the, who's the target audience? Target audience is, I would say, healthy, affluent people between the ages of let's say 45 to 70. Yeah. So I would say older demographic, more affluent people who really love the sun, who love uh, being outdoors, healthier lifestyle and have some disposable income. We're going to be charging 30 to $40 a grapefruit here. It's probably important. So the next question is, so the unique, so what makes the grapefruit unique? Let's say they are grown in Arizona on an organic farm. Uh, it's a it's an orchard that has been in in the Mitchell family for mm -hmm. seven generations, and it is watered by this spring that comes out of the desert mountains. I love, so okay. you've got this whole template for like that you've used. So the first part is really not even just describing, not even just thinking about the imagery, but really just getting the brand identity right. And then we're going to feed this in a chat GP to give us a bunch of prompts that we can then use for the other engines. Precisely. Yeah. Uh, so smart. So you've come to ChatGPT, you said pretty much say, hey, start, describe the following, brand identity, target audience, unique selling point. And then we've listed all those things in, in ChatGPT. So we're kind of feeding all this into ChatGPT. Yeah, precisely. So we're feeding all the information. Um, we filled out these three uh, key details. And then now we're going to ask ChatGPT to brainstorm. So now GPT should be able to so it's given us two different responses. Did you ask it to give you multiple different options to choose from or did it just do that by default? It did it by default. Got it. Great. Well, let's go with response. Let's go with response number one here. All right, cool. So now that we've selected response one, we're going to now go ahead and ask it to brainstorm some uh, visual images. So we're going to go ahead and ask a GPT to act like a creative assistant and to familiarize itself with the above. You didn't really ask it to do anything. Is this kind of just loading it in the memory of ChatGPT in the context window? Is that what you're doing? Exactly. Then I would ask it to help me brainstorm uh, for the idea above and to generate four different creative concepts. And now kind of like gonna, it's going to summarize some stuff and then it's going to give me some concepts and overviews. And then I like to have a dialogue with it. So this is where the kind of like dialogue happens afterwards. So now that it's kind of like gave me a bunch of different um, ideas around, you know, what we can brainstorm. Now we, we just ask it for creative ads or like I can say, oh, well, thanks. You know, can you give me three prompts for, you know, gift of health, for example? Um, and I want this to be for an email marketing campaign or I want this for a social media um, uh, image. So then now is the time. So I just like to go back and forth and have like a dialogue with it. Fascinating. Okay, great. I'm super curious to see how this all, this all flushes out. So in this case, we can just say to it, like, we need a content. Um, so could you give me more content ideas? So give me content ideas, lifestyle images. Feel free to generate prompts to you. So we can just dump that right into one of the platforms. Yep. So we can actually just go ahead and right here, generate, and then just paste that prompt. And we're doing this still in chat GPT with Dolly. Yep. So we haven't even gone to another platform yet. Yeah. Um, with GPT, it really... <laughs> Yeah. Um, so let me, let me expand it. But I'm surprised at the quality of like ChatGPT. I mean, this is not quite photorealistic, but it's like 96% of the way there. And now let's go on to Magnific. And Magnific again, this is, so this is an upscaler that kind of is going to make it more photorealistic. Yes. So okay. um, it's going to really just bring out the details, the texture of the grapefruit, really like it, it will bring it to life. So it um, so we'll okay. go ahead with uh, Magnific. So I just uploaded the image from Dali. So we're um, taking the original prompt we put into ChatGPT to create the image, and then we are also feeding that into Magnific, which is going to upscale or kind of make it look more real. But it gives it context. All right, here we go. So let's see. Oh, okay. Let's see what we've got in Magnific. So um, it looks like, so this is the before, yeah. and this is the after. Oh, wow. 
<laughs> That's so as crazy. You can, it's almost like it upscales it and makes it clearer, but most importantly, it adds those details that AI images lack. So that realism, you know, the glass, it's the reflection, the lighting, um, it's using what we'd call a, you know, photo-based rendering or photo photorealism-based images. So almost like how a camera interacts with the scene. Um, so it just basically adds the detail. It brings everything to life. It'd be great to see how you take an existing image of a product and work that into something with a background to make it look uh, like you don't have to pay for a $5,000 photo shoot for the day. I can show you on Create. This is the this is the business you've started. And can you give people, again, just a quick summary of what Creates is? I, I... So Creates is a platform which enables um, brand owners to essentially have the creative control when it comes to their AI images. If you wanted to, say you wanted to create a con a, a, an image for your social media of your product, but you want to create it in different environments and scenes, um, the platform gives you that creative control. So you're able to upload an image from Midjourney, from Dali, add your products in, into that scene, style it and shoot it, so render it. Yeah, so like, for example, in this case, we have Mateo, who's one of our users. So um, in this case, we uploaded a bunch of images. So these are images, background images from Midjourney. Um, so you just upload it onto Creates. And then in the product section, you just upload uh, an image of your product and the label. So iPhone shot image and then a PNG label. And then in this case, let's select and this quick. background image. And the way Creates works is, as I said, you upload a product image, also upload a background image from Midjourney, Dali, whatever platform you see fit. And then um, this is the product. And then the way you use it, you, you can, we've made the control super simple. So anyone can essentially um, move the elements around. And then if you, as you can see, it goes over the uh, lemon, but then if you select the pen to surface, it goes behind. And then with the lights and shadows, we have this controller and you can actually move the shadow to match the AI oh, scene. Crazy. That's so cool. How did you, how long have you been working on this business for? Um, so we've, so I had uh, creates as an agency um, since 2021, but we were building out this tool um, as of 2022. So for two years, roughly. Um, and right now we got it to a position where um, we have a few users using it and then we are going to be relaunching. It's still, in, it's still in closed beta. Amazing. And is this, are you doing it? Um, are you bootstrapping this? Did you raise money for this? Is your team like in the UK or are they, where, I'd love to hear about kind of how you're funding it and where the talent, or are you programming it? Like, how are you building it from a, from a, yeah. from a code perspective and also from a financial perspective? Yeah, no. Um, so I was fortunate enough to have met my um, technical partner back in 2022. So he's essentially helped build the product. Um, we are a team of four, going to be five soon. Um, and they're all scattered all over the world. So most of them are in the US though. So we have Tristan in the US, Daniel in Brazil, and then we have Mo in France. So, and then myself in London. And then in terms of how we funded this, um, so bootstrapped, we did get a, uh, a, we did raise a small pre-seed from a strategic partner um, who essentially saw the capabilities of the tool and created a bunch of images and decided to invest. And then, so now you just basically submit the shot and then I'm gonna show you where the magic happens. So what you see here are all the previews. Um, so with the previews, um, you don't really pay for, for them. Um, and then once you've submitted it to the render engine, it basically renders the image. And then the final image look like this. So, so this is just all AI, by the way, um, the background image, and then this as well. So adding the product and then rendering it with AI. Can you use, how good is ChatGPT or Stable Diffusion or any of them for creating the label side of things? Because it seems like traditionally that's where AI has struggled a little bit more with. Yeah, I mean, it's hit or miss. Uh, I've I've tried to create labels on uh, GPT, but it, it is hit or miss. Well, Salma, thank you. This has been super fun to see. Thank you for helping me create the Mitchell Grapefruit brand. Uh, fast, le least amount of work ever to put something out into the world that actually looks beautiful in my whole life. Um, thank you. Tell people about, we walked through, uh, walked through a, a, a demo a little bit of just creates there, but give people just another another 
sense of what it can do, who it's for, like pricing? How does that all work in case someone's listening to this and thinking like, this sounds super cool? Yeah. So what Create says is a platform that helps e-com brand owners create images using AI. You can generate background images on Midjourney, um, Dali, any other platform, uh, upload it into your studio, add your products, style it and shoot it. Um, we have essentially created images for companies like Jibby, so a coffee company, um, also CPG products. That's the main, uh, the main target audience. And yeah, you can, in terms of pricing right now, we are actually um, about to drop a new image generator. Um, we're going to launch that around May and the pricing is going to be much more competitive. At the moment, the prices uh, range from anywhere between $90 per image. But if you do the monthly deal, it'll probably be around $38 per image. Super cool. Excited to follow your work on this in the future. Uh, and it's a, for me, it just gives me a sense of, man, how many amazing things and quickly you can create just beautiful, stunning images. So uh, thank you for the walkthrough. Congrats on uh, Creates. And yeah, appreciate thank having you. you on. This was super fun. Thank you so much, Andrew. And thank you for having me on. Thank you. Have a lovely day.